welcome to Practical AI. If you work in artificial intelligence, aspire to, or are curious how AI-related tech is changing the world, this is the show for you. Thank you to our partners at Fly.io. Fly transforms containers into micro VMs that run on their hardware in 30 plus regions on six continents. So you can launch your app near your users. Learn more at fly.io. What's up friends? Intel Innovation 2024 is right around the corner. Accelerate the future. Registration is now open and it takes place September 24th and 25th in San Jose, California. This event is all about you, the developer, the community, and the critical role you play in tackling the toughest challenges across the industry. Ignite your passion for AI and beyond. Grow your skills to maximize your impact and network with your peers as they unleash the next wave of advancements in technology. Here's what you can expect. Understand the emerging innovation and trends in dev tools, languages, frameworks, and technologies in AI and beyond to empower you and the solutions you're building. Get in-depth technical experience, join hands-on workshops, labs, meetups, and hackathons to collaborate and solve problems in real time. You can explore featured partner and Intel solutions. They have partners there, startups there, customers there, and Intel is showcasing the latest in products, services, and solutions across keynotes, tech sessions, and the show floor to help you meet your development needs. Collaborate with experts, learn and have fun, engage in interactive sessions to connect, get certified, gain unique ideas and perspectives, build long lasting networks, and of course, have fun. And get inspired, hear from leading industry experts, technologists, startup entrepreneurs, and fellow developers, along with Intel leadership, CEO Pat Gelsinger and CTO Greg Lavender, as they take you through the latest advancements in technology. Don't miss this chance to be at the forefront of innovation. Take advantage of early bird pricing right now until August 2nd. Register using the link in our show notes or to learn more, go to intel.com slash innovation. Once more, that's intel.com slash innovation or go to the show notes and click that link. Welcome to another episode of Practical AI. This is Daniel Whitenack. I am founder and CEO at Prediction Guard. I'm joined as always by my co-host, Chris Benson, who is a principal AI research engineer at Lockheed Martin. How you doing, Chris? I'm doing fine. Uh, we got a fun one today, Daniel. This is going to be a good one. Yes, of course. It was wonderful not that long ago to be in uh, the great city of San Francisco and run into our friend uh, Demetrios from the ML Ops community. And uh, I, I figured I'd just bring him along for another conversation. So Demetrios, how you doing? I'm great, man. We're back and I've got some bad news to break to you right now. I wanted to do it on air. <laughs> Go yeah, for it. Just to get your reaction. Oh boy. You can be vulnerable. This is how we build community. Yeah, I'm nervous. Yeah, so Prediction Guard, awesome. Congratulations on all the success that you've had. We're doing a data engineering for ML and AI virtual conference, mm -hmm. and one of your colleagues, Daniel, filled out the CFP. Uh -huh. I haven't gotten back to him yet, but I can't accept him. I just am way too full, way over my head. And as much as I want to, I'm going to have to divert him to doing his own a special event, basically. We're going to actually take what may have been a bad thing and turn it into a good thing. That, that sounds great. I'm looking forward to learning more. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. You know, I got I to gotta make sure that you get all the love and shine you deserve because I'm super stoked at what you're doing. Yeah, yeah. Well, appreciate that. It was great to see you. And, and you had your own event in SF. How was that? I do not recommend doing live events to even my greatest enemies. <laughs> if anyone out there is contemplating organizing an AI conference, you can do it, but I don't recommend You're it. You're going to hurt. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's painful, man. But it, it was a big success. It was just a lot of work leading up to it, as you can imagine. And we had fun and on the day of. It was like, I think over 750 people showed up. A lot of great conversations, a lot of fun, like 
spontaneous, sporadic meetings with people. And that's the stuff you get at in-person conferences that you, it's really hard to replicate virtually. Yeah. You know what the secret is? The secret is it's AI and it needs a lot of hype. It really needs a lot of hype. It, there's one thing that <laughs> we don't have enough one. of in AI. It's we don't have enough hype. If you had hyped it more, <laughs> it would have worked. <laughs> you know, I do a fair amount of hyping. And so for those out there that are sick of the hype, like myself, I've only got myself to blame on this. <laughs> well, uh, Chris, yeah. you sent me um, a very interesting looking hype filled chart the other day you want to go into what that was well i i will uh and i'm actually blaming it all on demetrius uh he was making fun of the gartner hype cycle and gosh i hope they're not a sponsor because we're making fun of them today <laughs> and and he was he was going through that on and it was funny and i said dude we need to do an episode where we all analyze the gartner hype cycle in 2024 for artificial intelligence and we we break it down and we're going to assess it and decide what we think of those things and we're we're not doing this in our normal extremely serious manner we are doing this in the fun way and and lest you don't know Demetrius out there which I can't imagine because he's a regular guest on the show here he is in addition to being a brilliant guy in this field he is also the funniest man in all of artificial intelligence. So this is going to be good. Uh, and we're going to dive into the Gardner hype cycle today and break it down for you. We're going to start with the real one, and then we're going to uh, maybe make some adjustments to it. You know, Chris, you you say making fun, but um, I mean, Gartner seems to have fulfilled their mission. I mean, we're talking about the the hype cycle we're, we're going into it. So maybe their mission was fulfilled and, you know. We are their fulfillment. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, we're hyping it up right now. We're hyping we it very true. Okay. Yeah. And we're going to have fun doing it. <laughs> oh, I just have to say, yeah. Please, if anyone knows how I can get a job doing this kind of stuff, just making up words and then putting them onto a <laughs> wave <laughs> graph, let me know because I would love this as a job. It just seems like it's too much fun. <laughs> well, let's see. I think surf's up. <laughs> let's hop on the wave and let's start talking our way through. You know, Demetrius, you want to do you want to lead off on what some of your ideas there? So, I think the most surprising to me out of this whole graph. And for anybody that's not familiar with the hype cycle, you've got the big like upward side and then it goes down and it kind of crashes and then it starts to climb back up and it's the traditional like and the two second version of that and i did a, in our in a previous episode i did a longer version uh when we were looking at some specific things on it but the two second version is new technology comes out everyone's super excited about it they think it's going to be the greatest thing since sliced bread uh it doesn't live up to the hype they get frustrated they go good this thing sucks and and it falls down on the hype popularity side and then cooler heads prevail and they kind of go, OK, well, maybe it can do something OK. And and then it's into a, a reasonable sense of productivity. So that's Gartner in a nutshell. So the biggest surprise for me is at the bottom of the slope. So after it's gone all the way up the hype cycle, it's come down and crashed down and it is at the absolute bottom that the trash of disillusionment exactly there is cloud ai services yes <laughs> and for me that is the biggest misnomer because if anybody is making any money out of any of this and i guess maybe hype and actual money they're detached and they're very decoupled here but for me that was like wait what there's no hype in cloud ai services so bedrock out of there hype is killed it's at the trough of disillusionment any type of SageMaker, if you're using that, or Vertex, no, out of there. It's <laughs> the lowest of the low. And so when I saw that, that was instantly like, dude, why are you even doing it? Yeah. <laughs> I did not believe a thing that I read afterwards, but that was my thing. Any any big surprises from you guys? I think you're point on. If there's anyone making a killer amount of money on this, it's Microsoft, it's Amazon, it's Google. Uh-huh. Part of my struggle here is some of these terms, like I could interpret them one way or another way, 
right? Like SageMaker, for example, which for those that don't know, is a, it's kind of like a model deployment service within AWS and there's various convenience around it and that sort of thing. Like that's been around for quite a while now, like a very long time, even before sort of the kind of piped gen AI stuff. Oh, long um, before it, But yeah. yeah, so like, is that a cloud AI service? Like that's been around for a huge amount of time or are we just talking about like hosted model APIs, right? They don't say. Which also, to be fair, have been around a long time. Like you look at something like OCR or translation or something like that, and in cloud services have been around for a really long time and are sort of ubiquitously used. It's funny that it's down there. I, I, I get your point. Maybe it's just like everyone knows that's where the you know, cloud, that's where all the services are, we're all paying for them. Yeah, so does hype correspond to usage, I guess? Like in this chart, is it that people aren't hyping cloud AI services even if they're used or? I, I think it's an emotional thing. You know, the hype side is, you know, p how much people are talk. So maybe it's accurate in this context. There is nothing sexy about AI services in cloud <laughs> providers. And maybe that's what they're getting at is like, yes, we're paying an arm and a leg. We're giving them all of our money, but there is nothing sexy. But productivity wise, it's definitely productive. I, I would think so. Yeah, it's very pragmatic too, especially for those people just starting. I don't know any easier way than to just grab an API from like, Amazon Bedrock is just the hosted model, hit that API like you would hit an open AI API, but now you have a suite of models, right? So that seems to me like a, a near miss. But then at the top of the peak is the other one that was a huge surprise to me because I've noticed this trend. I don't know if you guys have noticed it, but people who were formerly ML engineers we've all converted into being AI engineers. And an AI engineer is so misleading because you don't know, is that somebody that is coming from like a front-end development world and now they do a little prompt engineering, they use a few frameworks and they can chain together some prompts to make a bit of a demo on Twitter and now they're an AI engineer? Or is it somebody that was deep, deep in the ML platform weeds and because AI is now the new rage, they call themselves an AI engineer. So I, I don't know about that, but it's at the top. I think it's the same. Yeah. It's I think it's all, I, I, I think people use AI, ML, and before it really fell out of vogue, deep learning interchangeably. Mm. Yeah, so. exactly. I don't know if it's also maybe connected to the fact, like Chris and I talked about this, I believe it was maybe last week. The fact that some of the disillusionment around AI is sort of the realization that turns out AI is integrated in software and you still have to do engineering to like build software. And it doesn't just sort of like having a model is a solution doesn't really like play out in reality. Do you mean oh, I can't just so buy an AI <laughs> model and stick it out there and magic it, things happen? Yeah. I, I mean, one would think. I'm so disillusioned. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's funny you guys mentioned that too because I've seen a few people talking about how LLMs are not a product. You have to build on top of LLMs your product or whatever it is, your service that needs to be there. So you can't look at an LLM as a product per se. And then I've also seen or I've been thinking deeply about something that is like the companies that are really getting a ton of value out of this AI movement. Uh, I'm thinking about one of my friend's companies who does like a support software. Uh -huh. And now he's leveraging AI and LLMs for creating like multi-agents and helping answer feedback or answer questions and queries for support. And he's using AI. That's awesome. He's able to sell that support product to companies really well. What I haven't seen is companies that say, hey, I am fraud detection as a service and I'm going to sell you this whatever traditional ML product as a service. Whereas you can create regular business unit products as a service that leverage AI, but you can't quite, or at least I haven't seen anybody crack the nut, create some kind of a traditional ML service 
type of product. I don't know if you guys have seen that. And I also don't know if I'm making much sense right now because it's something that's <laughs> relatively <laughs> fresh in my mind. I'm going to turn that one over to Daniel. <laughs> So, no, I wasn't making much sense, I guess, is what the <laughs> nice way of saying it is. Um, I mean, so you've got like, what I would say is the things that I have seen most are either what you were talking about. So utilizing generative AI embedded in the functionality of sort of domain specific applications, like the customer service you're talking about or financial services or whatever. or access to models over some API infrastructure, right? There's maybe less like general, I, I guess maybe the biggest one I've seen is sort of just general like fine tuning as a service. If you look at something like, you know, open pipe or, or something like that, but that's still fairly general purpose. It's not specific to any sort of use case that you might use maybe to a, some degree you know certain rag services would fit into that like we were talking to pinecone about their recent like they have more kind of pre-built things to have you do kind of like load in all your documents and have rag set up and all, all that stuff so um i don't know that's maybe the closest that i've seen to that sort of scenario yeah well also the big question is Everybody wants to, and this kind of ties back into the hype cycle, everybody wants to be doing RAG and wants to have all these great use cases with their RAG. And so like you were talking about with Pinecone, they make it really easy for you to do your RAG. But then at the end of the day, is that a viable business or is that actually super useful as opposed to somebody's got this support software that and they can come in and really cut down the burden for your customer success engineers or your customer success people. And that is fascinating to me because it's it's a booming business right now. The rag business, maybe, yeah, that's great. Maybe there's some interest there. Is it a booming business? I don't know. I haven't seen numbers. But I think the really fascinating part to me is if you try to juxtapose that with like a fraud detection as a service type of product. I just haven't seen that anywhere because I think, A, you're not able to really like give away everything as freely and B, what works for one fraud detection use case doesn't necessarily, it's not like you can productize that and then go out and sell it as a service in my opinion. So so this is a little bit of a tangent, I know, but uh, but that all that to say is we're at peak hype for AI engineers. <laughs> peak hype, yes. So I'm going to draw us back over to the hype cycle just for a moment, and I want to read. I'm going to do something boring for a moment. I'm going to read off the things where they are uh, for our listeners, because the three of us have the benefit, obviously, of seeing the graph in front of us, and for listeners who aren't. So uh, I'm going to take a, a moment, and then we can go back and start hitting them there. Very quickly, heading up the curve initially, the innovation trigger, we have autonomic systems, we have quantum AI, we have first principles AI, we have embodied AI, multi-agent systems, AI simulation, causal AI, AI-ready data, decision intelligence, neurosymbolic AI, composite AI, artificial general intelligence, otherwise known as AGI, and then we're hitting the peak of inflated expectations at the top of that hype cycle. We have sovereign AI, AI trism, prompt engineering, responsible AI, and at the very peak, AI engineering. And then starting to slide down, we have edge AI, foundation models, synthetic data, model ops, and generative AI. And just going into the trough of disillusionment is neuromorphic computing, smart robots followed at the bottom by cloud AI services, and then we slide up the slope of enlightenment to autonomous vehicles, knowledge graphs, intelligent applications, and finally the singular one on the plateau of productivity, which is where you want to end up, is computer vision, which is basically, yeah, we can do that. It's boring and no one talks about it anymore, but hey, we're making money. <laughs> so if the listeners out there are not confused oh there's a whole bunch i don't have any idea what they are <laughs> Gosh. 
I was going to say, which ones do you actually know what they are? Because what the hell is embodied AI? I've oh, I, I learned what that is after I put out the post. So someone said, oh, yeah, embodied AI is when you use AI in robots. It is. So, yeah. Uh, but there's also smart robots on the, yeah. on the cycle. And I used it at a former employer. I was specifically doing AI systems in robots, and I've never heard of it. You never called it embodied AI. <laughs> well, it's been a few years. I'll, I'll give you that. It was yeah. uh, so. But no, we weren't calling it embodied. I mean, so I think I'm at like a 30% hit rate on these and I really would love to know what first principles AI is because that feels like buzzword bingo to the fullest. I don't know. Um, let's see. First. Yeah, Daniel's going. Principles he's cheating. AI. He's, he's going to models to find out. He's um, The car, AI generated card in my Google search says, when applied <laughs> to AI, first principles AI suggests developing AI systems and algorithms by understanding the foundational principles of machine learning, neural networks, and data science from the ground up. It, don't uh. we do that anyway when we're, isn't that kind of inherent in training new models and stuff? Oh, like, oh but no, no, we're really going back. We're going back to the very first ones. You're at the second or third principle. We're beating you. Yeah, no, because all you guys that are out there that aren't using first principles, you know, that's lower down on the hype cycle. Okay. Oh, this is, yeah. Okay. So, the other pieces, I, I mean, were there any other surprises for you guys? Because I have so many other pieces on here that I'm like, what? I think for me, like some of these things are themselves correlated and yet in different places on the chart, right? Yes. So it's like, if you look at generative AI, foundation models, edge AI, AI engineering, prompt engineering, probably some others on there, all of those like sort of fit into the same ish bucket and yet are on different sides of the hump. So yeah, I, I don't know, like some of these, it, it's also a matter of where do you draw the boundaries? Where's the boundary between generative AI and foundation models or generative AI and prompt engineering? I'll give you one, you know, as we're at the very bottom on the innovation trigger is quantum AI. And I've, okay, so that's not going to happen anytime <laughs> soon. And, and I will note that they have it on the greater than 10 years. But I would suggest it's probably greater than greater than 10 years. But isn't that, uh, I mean, one of the things that's interesting about this whole cycle is there's that one, uh, maybe you all can tell me or I can look it up. There's a one law, it's like a general law that people talk about where you underestimate short-term innovation and overestimate long-term innovation or, or something like that. Vice versa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, I said that backwards. Yeah. So it seems like some of like it's hard to especially the time angle of this. It's hard to because things just pop up and you like really didn't see certain things coming and others that you thought would would come don't. So yeah, it, it's extremely difficult. One hundred percent. One thing that I am just to tag on what you're talking about, Daniel, with the bucketing these please tell me what the difference is between an AI engineer and a prompt engineer. <laughs> what, like a prompt engineer is someone that only does prompts, I guess. And that's all that matters. So they're just, so I can see how, how it's like, where's the line here? When prompt engineering came out, Daniel, you might remember, I kind of made fun of that. I was like the whole, that you talk about like, because people were saying they're new jobs or just for prompt engineers and stuff. And I'm like, that is a passing fad. Like that will be just so ingrained in what everybody does all the time that the notion of there being someone who that's their entire job all the time for years is not going to happen. Yeah. I also um, didn't know. So like I've never heard anyone use the word or if it's a word, it's an acronym, AI Trism. Mm. Do no, people I, go around saying that? Yeah. What is that? What is it? <laughs> so <laughs> it's, I, I looked it up and you know what's, what's funny because this is exactly the area that I'm working in every day. <laughs> it's AI Trism is tackling trust, risk, and security in AI models. Ah, oh, okay. <laughs> You've never heard that used, have you? And I've never heard that, but now I feel like I should put it on our website <laughs> <laughs> because it's hyped. <laughs> yeah, you definitely need there. That's right. The funny part is it's almost as hyped as prompt engineering, which you, is 
basically all you hear about is prompt engineering, right? And yeah, they're right there together. AI Trism, you never hear about? Yeah, there you go. Uh, but the Trism, it's <laughs> it's out there. It is. <laughs> We hear about you know the the components that make that up all the time, sure, but just never the. You know, I've never heard them put it together that way, and I'm sure there are people that are out there that that you know their focus is in the that area, and they're like, of course it's Trism, how do you? But yet, guess what? Most of us don't know that. No, not at all. I don't even know if I go and I just look at this. I don't know what causal AI is. I don't know what the AI simulation is. The multi-agent, I do understand, but then, like, even when you say quantum AI, I don't know what that is. The one that I, I would say is probably in the wrong spot is synthetic data. It feels like that should be still going up on the hype train because yeah. we're just discovering what we can do with synthetic data. And every week, I feel like we s unlock new use cases and synthetic data is just uh it's the gift that keeps on giving in my eyes <laughs> <laughs> i think that's the difference in you who actually does it and somebody at gardner you know the, who was tasked to go put the chart together and doesn't actually do the thing in real life i've, yeah. I've terribly offended somebody out there <laughs> <laughs> well we're glad that it's out there let's just say that we are very happy that this exists so we can have a whole episode dedicated to breaking it down yes it's a conversation starter mm -hmm. yeah that's what i mean like achievement Unlo made unlocked. Yeah. yeah unlocked so one thing that i notice isn't there at all which really surprises me uh given how much it's bantered about is ethical ai it's not on the chart and that doesn't go in the trism that's not I, one it, of the maybe it does maybe this is where i you know is ethical ai now transformed from a labeling standpoint into trism is that is that where we're going i don't know or what is the overlap between responsible ai trism and ethical ai okay well yeah i don't and there isn't really anything on here about gpus or hardware so yeah i think that's because they made their own hype cycle for GPUs. That's and right. If I'm not mistaken, I, I feel like I've seen that somewhere on the internet. You'd be cannibalizing your other chart. Exactly. So you can't put any GPU hardware, anything on the AI one. You got to refer people to the GPU hype cycle. And maybe it's like that with ethical AI. Like they made a whole other ethical AI chart that is the hype cycle for ethical AI. Maybe so. I'm not familiar with it. How many charts can you make? That's if you're Gardner, oh, I, think I guess. They have, I mean, we have just the artificial intelligence hype cycle here, but they probably have, I think I've seen multiple, you know, subdivisions and stuff out there. So that's why it's a great business to be in. Gardner selling all these different hype cycles. Well, speaking of what to hype, what uh, what's not on the hype cycle, but Ooh. should be. All right. If I could have talked to somebody at Gardner before they were making this, I would have advised. And so this is my, basically, this is my video job interview right now. I'm busy typing an invoice up for you to send to them. Okay. <laughs> Just for you. Right. Exactly. I would have advised AI Gateway. That is very popular. That's climbing the hype cycle right now because people really like to have the option to hit an AI gateway. And if it is not that complex of a query, you don't need to hit GPT-4. You don't need the most expensive model. If you have some kind of open source model that is cheap, then let the simple query go to that 7B model. And so I've been hearing people call it an AI gateway. Others, I think, have called it like a LLM proxy, Router. maybe. Your router, yeah, that's another yeah. one. So we would have to agree on the actual name, but that's yeah. gaining hype for sure. <laughs> yeah, agreed. Yeah, it's. Uh, I've definitely seen the router language, whatever it is. Like the languages overlap with networking, um, which is basically like you're just routing API calls. So I mm -hmm. guess that makes sense. Yeah. Any any that you guys would have liked to have seen on here, and where? 
I had the ethical, I'm still wondering what composite AI is. Did we ever get that answered or if I just, <laughs> am I having a senior moment or something? What is it? Yeah, what is um, it? What, uh, the one that really stands out to me, unless I'm just like, there's a lot of words on this page, so maybe I'm totally missing it somewhere. But where is multimodal AI? Oh, yeah. Oh, good catch oh, yeah. there. It's good not catch. on here, is it? No. Who cares about multimodal? That's so weird. That should be <laughs> in the peak of inflated expectations. This is like the thing of 2024, like yeah. multimodal AI. <laughs> That's so fun. Even multimodal rag should be right. on here, like climbing the innovation trigger. Multimodal models should be on the peak of inflated expectations that that is such a good catch i know tons of people who who say multimodal and have no idea what it means <laughs> well what what does it mean chris yeah, what? <laughs> <laughs> quiz time well it's having different modalities of of input there so that you can combine different inputs to get a a rich output you know in a very general sense i have no idea yeah so voice I know it when photos, I see photos. Yeah, video, Voice, photos, video, yeah, text. all the things, <laughs> all the things. Yeah, which, exactly. Which is what we want. I want to throw a bunch of stuff that I have and and have a fantastic. Just have it sorted out and give me the best answer. Uh, and even with today's multimodal models, that doesn't happen very well. There's I I'm I'm often I'm often frustrated and disappointed with uh, with those outputs. So yeah, it's I, I'm expecting better. Yeah, and along those lines, I have two that I would like to have seen. One yeah. is just transformers in general. Where is that? Where are they on this hype cycle? Because that also feels like, are they climbing or are they going down? I don't it know. It would be trough of disillusionment, heading downward because <laughs> yeah. that it's kind of we're 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 past that and people are now talking about post transformer models mm -hmm. you know quite often so it's kind of like yeah psh, yesterday so there needs to be another dot for post transformer yep, going up. models that's definitely going up and that's right speaking of which it feels like okay we've got sp small language models where are they mm -hmm. because that is all the rage it is that was like it, and maybe it's all the rage for every vendor who is not open AI because they can't compete on GPT-4. And so what do they do? They say, well, you can just host your own small language model and fine tune it and get better performance than GPT-4. And so I think small language models are probably, they should be in that innovation trigger, maybe the peak of inflated expectations because... Anyone who's ever used a 7B model might not want to use it if they have the choice. <laughs> well, maybe maybe it's, is it, are you sure that's going up or could it possibly mm. be sliding into that disillusionment that you just referred to? Potentially, that's because true. Because maybe it is going into the trough of disillusionment, uh, you know, hypo, just hypothetically, because... I do think that when it gets to the plateau of productivity, small models will be those, the, just the workhorse you know, you'll have them out on the edge everywhere. Every freaking device you've ever imagined or seen is going to have small models in it that are inferencing. We won't ever have anything that doesn't have them. It'll be just the, oh, yawn. Of course, we have our small models in our watch. Which leads me to the next one that I'm like, where is this? Why do they not have wearable AI? That is a perfect mm, buzzword yeah. that should be on here. And yeah. if you look at like what Meta's doing with the glasses, or if you see any of those necklaces that you can wear and it records everything, yeah, that's wearable AI right there. I just, I may have just made that up or I may have seen that before, but that one should be on here. It should be there. I agree. Hey friends, OutShift, Cisco's incubation engine, merges innovation with the art of possible, a launch pad for transformative emerging tech. OutShift blends startup agility with corporate strength to develop next-gen technologies from the ground up in AI, quantum technologies, cloud native, and more. Their newest AI innovation, Motific, 
addresses a critical challenge in the rapidly advancing world of Gen AI, bridging the gap between concept and deployment. This model and vendor agnostic solution supports the entire Gen AI journey from assessment and experimentation. Motific accelerates deployment from months to days while safeguarding against Gen AI security, trust, compliance, and cost risks, all while empowering business function and IT teams to rapidly configure end user assistance powered by organizational data. Motific provides advanced customizable policy controls to prevent unauthorized access to sensitive data and helps ensure compliance throughout the entire process. With deep visibility into operational and business metrics, Motific enables you to track ROI, optimize costs, and make informed decisions. By offering a centralized view, Motific deters shadow AI usage and empowers teams to innovate responsibly. So move beyond the traditional constraints of AI implementation, utilizing AI deployment that is both responsible and is revolutionary, ensuring your projects are not just quickly launched, but built on a foundation of trust and efficiency. Visit motific.ai. That is M-O-T-I-F-I-C dot A-I. Maybe this fits into kind of the agentic stuff that is represented in certain ways on there, but this whole idea of whatever, you know, like tool function calling slash like text to SQL, like interacting with structured databases, APIs, whatever that is. I don't know, like the maybe the general name for that other than tool and function calling or text to SQL, but um, certainly that's like sliding into a zone where people are definitely doing some of those things in in production and there's products released around it so like the the hex magic stuff and and all that that other where is it on the chart though before we go on oh where is it on the chart um i mean it's got to be somewhere somewhere around ai engineering so it's at the peak of it uh, maybe yeah. maybe yeah, I don't know. I don't know. It I might be. Just past, maybe it's going I think it's down because people are like, uh, "Agents aren't reliable." Yeah, I, I think that's right. I think it's heading down <laughs> into the trough of disillusionment. That's where I would guess. Yeah, yeah. And if you compare that to where they have it, multi-agent systems, it's got a long way to go up. It is at the yeah. very bottom of very this hype cycle. Yeah. So yeah, I think we <laughs> instinctively are like, "No, please, no more agents." <laughs> and Gardner's like, oh, we're just getting started, baby. Well, and and they're like, no, please, more agents together, yeah. multi agents. <laughs> it Gardner's going to create their own agent <laughs> hype cycle next. That's going to be the Maybe. next one that they can create. Maybe, and so <laughs> we'll, you know, take a commission for giving you that idea, Gardner. No problem there. Uh, one thing, can we call out the elephant in the room because? Where is retrieval augmented generation on? Yeah. Here? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> How is that not on here? What? Really? Yeah. Rag? What's that? Because I was thinking about it. <laughs> I was thinking about it and I was like, oh, you know what they missed is graph rag. That is mm -hmm. all the hype these days. Yeah, yeah. And that's <laughs> probably right around where sovereign AI is, where it's maybe like at the it's border of the, the yeah. yeah, yeah, it's yeah. going up, nearing the peak of, of yeah. inflated expectations. You're right. More hype than the trism. Yep, more but, hype than the trism. <laughs> uh, but I would argue rag is is heading to the trough of disillusionment. Anyone want yeah. to disagree with that? No, no, I think so too. I think I, it's over the hump. Yeah, I do too. I, I mean, it's and people are kind of hitting the the challenges and 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 you know and actually, uh, Daniel advanced rag you know which we've talked about several times mm -hmm. uh, you know the kind of kind of trailer well we don't just have rag now we have advanced rag yeah. and and Naive you know rag. Being, advanced. as things are starting to head over that peak of inflated expectations with rag and you well guess what we can juice some more yep. we have advanced rag but i think i think the whole thing is starting to go over the side and you know people are like okay well we've kind of done at least the easy stuff uh, mm -hmm. to the advanced rag point. There are people that are that are doing it better than others, but nonetheless, you know, I, it's you know, 
what's next? So what, what, I'm just curious, exactly. two second deviation. We've talked about, you know, fine tuning. We've talked about rag. What's coming next in that, in that sphere? What, what are they missing there? Yeah. <laughs> A new model. <laughs> yeah. I think you mentioned that you might've had some of these Demetrios, uh, what are AI hyped items that are your own that you've come up with a name for oh. that other people <laughs> will have to interpret <laughs> what, All right. to, to figure out their definition? You wanna you wanna guess? Yes. On this one? All right, here we go. I am going to start you off with uh with a pretty simple one. This one is free range AI. <laughs> free range. Is that is that open access LLMs? <laughs> close, close. What do you got, Chris? Grain fed. <laughs> I, I can't get off the free range thing. I'm an animal guy. I can't even. I can't even get into the AI headspace <laughs> on this one. That's AI that was trained without guardrails. Okay, oh, gotcha. Okay, I gotcha. like that. Well, we we already talked about about one here um, that that you alluded to, Demetrios. But my name for it was Trinket AI. Wearables, Is yes, wear- yeah, yes. Trinket AI, <laughs> Trinket yeah. Imagine AI. it's it's in your fidget spinner. That sounds yeah, a lot, right? That's a much AI better name everywhere. than wearable AI. Yeah, yeah. Trinket AI. <laughs> uh, it is every little thing you have on your body has a freaking model inferencing on it. You know, yeah. or you're. <laughs> and it doesn't bring you any extra value <laughs> if we're going to follow the <laughs> AI trend. Well, you it just, just don't have to think anymore. You can click that button and take a picture, Demetrius. <laughs> no, it just gives you some verbose answer to a question that you didn't really ask. <laughs> <And> <laughs> so your shirt is, you're like, hey, have I been sweating? And then it tells you the origin of sweat in a three page <laughs> PDF that you have to go download. <laughs> <laughs> well, do I get senior moment AI? That yeah. that would be good for me. You know, I, I there's a huge market for that. Everybody over the age of you know 50 is going to buy senior moment AI to, <laughs> to you know like what 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 oh and it get, oh there we go and you know yeah. I can I can continue instead of pausing for the next three minutes to try to figure out what it was I was about to do. <laughs> or I was thinking that that's uh, how seniors interface with AI so they don't get left behind. It's like True. this is the product that will make sure you stay up to date. You're ahead of the curve. Mm. Okay. Sounds yeah. good. All right. I got another one for you all. Okay, go this for one it. is EQ AI. Oh, empathetic AI. Yeah. So it, it's also been Emotional known as empathetic AI. Yeah. <laughs> you may hear other people out there and on the streets calling it empathetic AI. Uh, this one is a type of AI that has high emotional intelligence and it feels empathy for you when you get frustrated that it's not giving you the right answer and your prompts aren't working, but it doesn't actually make your prompts work. It just feels bad for you. Okay. I, that minus the AI bit that happened to me (laughs) yesterday, I was on Comcast on their stupid tech support for four hours texting they passed me off and every pro- everyone was so empathetic, but they accomplished nothing. If you put that in AI, <laughs> I'm quitting AI. If you put that into any AI that does that, I'm just done. I'm, I'm walking away from the whole field. Are you Sorry. sure it wasn't already AI that you were talking about? Oh, it could have been. I, I mean, it, I, been. it was just text. It was yeah. only text, but it was horrible. We've already passed yeah. the Turing test, so... It's like they're there. I'm getting a response of, I'm so sorry. I'm just very sorry. We're going to here to help you. And I'm like, I'm going to freaking kill you. You know? Yeah. <laughs> yes. That's what four hours texting support will do. But yeah. don't do. Yeah. I just, um, if you bring that to AI, it'll ruin the whole thing for me. Well, right. this one, funny enough, is actually on the uptick. When you look yeah. at the slope, the EQ AI has got a yep. lot of runway left. Yep. Um, so my, my next one is AI, either AI nepotism or AI anti-nepotism. Oh, <laughs> I don't, <laughs> I'm trying to make fighting, that. A, fighting AI nepotism. Fighting AI nepotism. Oh, okay. You're going to have to, you're going to have to go into that one for me. That's, I've stumped yeah, you. Yeah. 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 This what is exciting. It it's basically. 
using AI against like the government using AI or what? No, no. So uh, uh, foundation model related, maybe. Or, yeah. Right? So yes. this would be like multi-model AI in that you are not preferential to one language model family and oh. only using that family, but you are now multi-model and, you know, as such, not practicing nepotism. But are you multimodal, multimodal? <laughs> <laughs> this maybe, is also, maybe not. you know, I knew it by its other name, uh, which is polygamy AI. Uh, <laughs> yes. Oh, gosh. Yeah. Where are we going? <laughs> <laughs> oh no, or or some in Turn San away. Francisco call it polyamorous AI, as yeah. it tends <laughs> to be. So <laughs> the the next one that I've got for you. Oh, where is this nepotism AI on the hype cycle? By the way, mm, uh, I think it's still a bit on the rise. I saw A16Z in their in their post. One of the things they called out was multi model future. Oh yeah, there's a future for this one. That yeah. is for sure. <laughs> So I've got one that is called Broccoli AI. Okay. This one's it, on, this one's going is down. Is it related to some side. sort of graph thing? No, but that could be <laughs> nice. Yeah. Branching. Is it synonymous with healthy AI? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Maybe you've heard it termed healthy AI. It, or, efficient. <laughs> yeah. It's sustainable. Uh, no, so, <laughs> oh, that's another one that I've got though, but we'll get yeah. to that in a minute, which, <laughs> which reminds me, like, it does feel like sustainable AI should have been on the real hype cycle. Like that's an actual term, yeah. isn't it? Yes, it is. And it's not. And it's not on there. The other one that should have been on there that I was like, where, why isn't it on there is ensemble AI that feels mm. like, or ensemble models that feels like it should have been on there. See, one of the ones that I looked up was composite ai yeah that's the one i didn't know i think well i don't know it's slightly different than ensemble but i think that they like composite was combining multiple multiple ais together um in some way or another for one inference like you have multiple you know models inferencing but you have one inference back out to the uh, the user yeah something like that i don't know although ensemble could very yeah very much mean for a single inference, getting a majority vote or something like that. Okay, but. so it would be where composite AI is on the chart if they're assuming they're correct. Yeah. yeah. And we're, we're, before we leave it, sustainable AI, where is it on the chart? That's very much like it's got a lot of hype to go. Yeah, I so think it's low to up. mid-level, mid-level on, the, on the curve up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. But just think about how many people are talking about the energy that is wasted training the foundational models. True. And how we need to build out all these data centers and they need to be sustainable, et cetera, et cetera. So yeah, sustainable AI for sure has some room to grow. Back to broccoli AI, <laughs> <laughs> aka healthy AI. This is AI, and this is very much on the downslope again. It has passed its peak. People are a little disillusioned with it because it's AI that doesn't taste good for the organization, but it's needed. And so Ooh. you can imagine the cybersecurity folks, they love this kind of AI. <laughs> Is this like a linear regression model or what would you consider good for an organization? I think you use the word good. Yeah, healthy. It's, it's healthy. healthy for the, if we could go to healthy for the organization. What could that be? I, I mean, I actually didn't get to do enough market research in this section <laughs> to... <laughs> <laughs> to figure that part out, you know, I was just throwing yeah. spaghetti at the wall. But I, if I were to think about what's healthy, yeah, it would probably be the traditional ML. Going back to the what I was talking about before, like fraud detection is one of mm -hmm. those where it's not really AI. Some people might know it as its former term, ML. So <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, they're all the same yeah. from a marketing standpoint. Exactly. Well, yeah, uh, the, the waters are too muddied for them to make any actual difference. That's right. So what else you got? What else you got? Okay, so I've got unsustainable AI, which is way different than sustainable AI, just so we're clear. An it's, inverse. In it, but it's not even, it's a whole different uh, sector of the universe that we're talking mm -hmm. about. It's not like, oh, it's just 
the opposite of sustainable AI. Unsustainable AI is it's got a, <laughs> it's at peak hype right now. Let's be honest. If I could swap it out with the AI engineer, it is at peak hype because this is AI that was built for a product demo, but not for scale. That is unsustainable AI. Happens all the time. Yeah. So anything that you see, uh, basically, we can hopefully none of these guys are your sponsors, but let's just cue Devin or <laughs> Rabbit or Humane, all those unsustainable AI. The yeah. trinkets? The trinkets. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. So it's sort of analogous to doing like prototyping software where you're, you're never intending to, to grow it into production. Exactly. So, so that's all of mine that I, I could think of. Well, I think that was a pretty good list. I did realize, I don't know, maybe maybe related to some of the discussion we had earlier, but I don't see neighborly AI on here. That's kind of creepy when you think about it. <laughs> I, I wasn't creeped out until you said that, but... <laughs> <laughs> I had this image of Mr. Rogers' neighborhood, you know, but instead of Mr. Rogers, it's the AI. Hi, girls and boys. Uh -oh. Maybe they can help you clean up a few things with their rags. It clean no. <laughs> oh boy. Uh, well, I was thinking it was like next door where it was almost like the voting system, the ensemble, but it was oh, for local gotcha, LLMs. Gotcha. Yeah, I realize there's nothing about vectors or embeddings on the chart. I was just thinking about that. Actually, there's yeah, there's no vector stores on here. Or even just general embeddings Embedding of any models. type. Yeah. yeah. I wouldn't that be plateau of productivity now where we've had those for so long that they're just I don't know. Lexicon, no no emotion left in them. Yeah. <laughs> what I was thinking is they probably aren't on there is because Gardner also has one of their best products ever the magic quadrant and that'll be the next episode mm. that i come and drop in on <laughs> we can remake the magic quadrant for the different sectors and i imagine that they have a magic quadrant for vector databases yes that sounds delightful yeah well it it <laughs> it has been delightful to uh to have you on demetrios um i'm glad you brought your various new AI terms to the hype cycle. And uh, now I have have some work to to do on my broccoli AI. So <laughs> incorporate that into your product for sure. It's That's it's right. right around there for Trism. It would be a good AI logo, just like a broccoli floret. The yeah, the broccoli or the I saw a great paper that was all about leaks. It was all about data leakage when you send API calls to OpenAI. Uh -huh. And the paper started with a uh, emoji of a leak. That's awesome. Like the leaks you eat. Right. And it was saying here's, and it was basically showing how you send your data to open AI, but a lot of other people are going to get it too, if you're not careful. Yeah. Which is one, one thing that we haven't really touched on, but that seems like it's got some hype around it. It's what? Data leakage AI. Data leakage, data poisoning. Data I know in my in, in my day job that's a common conversation. Yeah. yeah. Prompt injection should Prompt be there. Prompt injection. Right? Yes. Uh I yeah, guess this all fits under trism. Yeah. This is it. We're going over trisms right now. <laughs> trisms and trinkets. <laughs> <laughs> On that note, that very <laughs> profound note. Uh it, it has been great to discuss the all the trisms with you uh Demetrios. i've had a blast and, uh, as always please please come back uh as as usually give your uh your own hype about the the upcoming event before we close out and where people can find out more about it yeah i, I always feel bad i come on here and just show my stuff so this time no shilling i've just had a blast doing this with you guys okay uh, so if anybody wants to find out about the next virtual conference or the in-person conference they can just google ml ops community and i'm sure it'll pop up cool all right hey much appreciated we'll talk to you soon dimitros thanks man yeah thanks guys all right that is practical ai for this week subscribe now if you haven't already head to practicalai.fm for all the ways 
and join our free Slack team where you can hang out with Daniel, Chris, and the entire ChangeLog community. Sign up today at practicalai.fm slash community. Thanks again to our partners at fly.io, to our Beat Freaking residents, Breakmaster Cylinder, and to you for listening. We appreciate you spending time with us. That's all for now. We'll talk to you again next time. Thank you.